Hey everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with this new series called The Key Components of Revival. And actually here I am in this broadcast room, in this production room here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we're doing these Route 66 revival, tent revivals all across America. So I thought in the summer season of 2022, as it's hot with the fire of God, I thought to myself, why not do a series for all of you on YouTube, all of our friends and family on the key components of revival. And today in episode one, I want to talk about hunger and thirst because I believe this is the number one key component of revival. If you are not hungering after the things of God, then you will never get it. Bill Johnson, of course, senior pastor of Bethel Church of Redding, California. He has a wonderful quote that says, in the natural, when you eat, you become full. But in the spiritual, when you eat, you become hungry. And I believe God wants us to hunger and thirst. Let me ask you, is revival caught or is it taught? First and foremost, what is revival? And that is a great debate. That is a million dollar question. What is revival? Once again, in the dictionary, revival means to revive what is dead. Most churches are experiencing a renewal, quote unquote, or an awakening. That is different from a revival. Although I do believe that there are many dead Christians in the pews, many dead Christians in churches. However, most believers are actually asleep and they need to become woke or come alive, they need to be awakened by the power of Jesus. But that is a big difference with revival, because when you are in an atmosphere of awakening or renewal, refreshing or revival, revival means that the dead are coming alive. And I believe right now God is releasing a spirit of awakening, a spirit of revival, and I'm excited to see and experience the great awakening in America, the third great awakening in this country. But today for this episode, we're talking about hunger and thirst because Jesus says in the Beatitudes, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you will be filled. Now that is a promise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You'll be filled. Everyone say, I will be filled. You will be filled with the Holy Ghost. You'll be filled with the glory of God. You'll be filled with the things of Jesus Christ. But you need to first hunger and thirst. Let me tell you, no matter what I've seen, no matter where I go, No matter what I've experienced in my life, I'm always hungering after the more of God because there's so much more in the realm of God's kingdom and in the realm of God's spirit. You cannot limit Jesus. You cannot limit the Lord. Many people say, oh, look at the word of God, the Bible. Of course, this is the full and errant final word of God. This is his word. However, many people will limit Jesus and the experiences of the Holy Spirit by exactly word for word, word verbatim, what is listed in scriptures. Yes, scriptures are an example and a foundation of our biblical faith. However, there's so much that God has for you. And I believe God wants us to hunger and to thirst. The word of God here says uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians 14, 1, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy, pursue. Everyone say pursue. That word in the Greek pursue means to be like a man that is on the hunt for a woman. You saw somebody you like, you saw somebody that's, whoa, attractive. And this man is going after this woman with all of his strength. Pursue, go after, chase, be a predator in a sense. Hunt it down, target it down. I love the Song of Solomon, that one of the passages there, in the word of God says, I was looking for the one that my heart loved. And the bride or the woman went out in the streets in the cold night hour looking for the one that she loved. Can we pursue? Can we go after? Can we chase the greater things of God? Now, this is actually a commandment slash instruction. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. Desire, want it. Like a husband that is jealously wanting his wife. He finds out that his wife is committing adultery, cheating. Like God wants us. He is a jealous, jealous God. In that same way, God is in pursuit, desire. Be like Jesus. Be like a husband, a man that is after his wife. Come on, somebody. And God wants us to pursue. God wants us to chase after. Matthew 6, 
33, the word of God says, but seek first, seek, everybody say seek, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When you seek, you will find. When you ask, you will have. When you knock, the door will be open. How many Christians are actually seeking the face of God? Let me tell you, you need to seek. You need to pursue. You need to desire. And that goes to hunger. I don't know about you, but I want to see the greater works that Jesus talked about in the word of God. Jesus said, greater things you will do in my name. Greater things. There's so much that God has for you and I. Have you walked on water yet? Have you gone through the walls yet? Have you, in a sense, levitated or even as Jesus himself, he rose again? Have you experienced these supernatural signs and wonders? Have you raised the dead? Have you seen blind eyes open? There's greater things. Have you literally seen mountains move? Literal mountains, not metaphorical, but literal mountains. There's greater things that God has for us. And the number one key component of revival is having a hunger and a thirst. We break off the spirit of familiarity. When you become too familiar with God, then you get religion. When you become too familiar with the man, woman of God, with the gifts of the spirit, with the moves of the Holy Spirit, then you fall into tradition. Too many people are experts, they're theologians, Look at the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious teachers of the day. They thought they knew it all, but they did not see Jesus. Even as the works and the miracles of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, was apparent and obvious and evidential before all, they rejected Jesus because they were jealous. Their hearts were hardened and they became stiff-necked and stubborn. My goodness, tradition and religion these type of dogmatic, traditional, historical things are important, but sometimes they can get in the way of a fresh new move of God. And let me tell you, there's always more. There's always new. The Bible says we go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, victory to victory, experience to experience, which means that there's always more. I don't know about you, but I want to experience the more of God. I want to see the face of God. I love the words of Apostle Paul. He says, I consider everything I've seen and done rubbish. Everything I've seen in my years, I consider it rubbish for the sake of seeing, knowing the greater knowledge of Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul, the greatest theologian, the greatest apostle, miracle worker of our time, the man who wrote half of the New Testament. The man who brought the gospel to the Gentiles. Who spread Christianity all across Europe and Asia. That man, he said, I consider everything I've seen, known, and done as cow dung. Cow poop. As rubbish. And this is Apostle Paul. And he's saying, for the sake of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. He keeps pressing on. He wants to go after. He knows that there's so much more. Let me tell you, beloved, we have barely scratched the surface of what God has for us. We have barely scratched the surface. Oh, there's so much more that God has for you. No height, no depth, no width, no length is the measure of the love and the glory of God. There's so much that God has for us even while we're here on planet Earth. Yes, not just when we die and go to heaven. Come on, somebody. But right here, right now, that is revival. That is a move of God. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Do you want more? Are you familiar with Jesus? Oh, is he your daddy, God, your best friend, your papa, Abba, daddy? Or is he somebody who's so mysterious, so majestic, so holy and awesome that you revere him, you fear him, you honor him? And you are continuously in awe of what the Lord is about to do. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, let your words be few and be in awe of God. Wow. When's the last time you were in awe of the Lord? When's the last time you, wow, you were baffled 
The gospel says that whenever Jesus moved in miracles, they were baffled, confounded, astonished. They were blown away. They marveled. Oh, shakarababa. These people, as they saw the miracle of Jesus, they were blown away. They were in unbelief, disbelief. They've never seen or heard of anything like the works, the miracles of Jesus Christ. Are you baffled? Are you astonished? When's the last time you gasped because God was so amazing? When's the last time you saw the wow factor of Jesus? Let me tell you, God is about to show up and show off. And only those who hunger and thirst for righteousness are going to be filled. Let me tell you, beloved, there's always more. I hope your taste buds are being wet right now, are being insatiated right now. I hope that God is bringing you into deeper waters. Stop being ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep. Go all in for the glory of God. Are you hungry for Jesus? Are you thirsty for more of God? Let me tell you, God wants to give you the drink of your life. Hunger and thirst is a key component of revival. Remember, is revival caught or is it taught? Let me ask you this. Is revival sovereign or is it sought out after? Many people say revivals, moves of God, extended revivals, they're sovereign. It's the divine, supernatural, unstoppable hand of God. It's God's doing. However, if it's God's sovereign doing, then why aren't we seeing revivals more often? Why are not we seeing things like Brownsville, Lakeland, Toronto, the Argentine revival, Azusa Street revival, the first and the second great awakening? These types of mass revivals that shake a region like we see in the book of Acts where the Bible says the apostles turned the world upside down. Regions, countries, nations, cities were shaking under the power of God. There was no marketing. There was no social media branding. There was no good photos, no good advertising. It was the raw power of Jesus Christ. Jesus! Is revival sovereign or is it sought out after? Let me tell you, God will not release a move of God unless there's a people, a company, a remnant that is seeking after the things of Jesus. Oh, if my people who are called by my name if they humble themselves and turn away from the wicked ways, and if they seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. If that's the condition, if my people turn, that's the condition. You have to do something first. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But let me tell you, you can only draw near to him because he's allowing you to draw near. We can only love because he first loved us. But there needs to be a response. There needs to be a shift by the working of the Holy Ghost and by the grace of God, yes. But we need to seek after the things of God. That's why my greatest job as a prophet, as a man of God, is to help stir up revival fires. Oh, there's a little bit of, there's a little spark here. Let me fan it to flame. Oh, there's a little potential here. <sighs> Let the winds of God come. Oh yeah, there's a little, the, the embers are still burning here a little bit. Let's throw some gasoline on it. That's our job. Stir it up to flame. Iron sharpens iron. Spur one another in the faith. Show you there's more. There's so much more that God has. Oh my God. Have you become full? Are you full of yourself? Are you an expert? Have you arrived? Are you a theologian with your PhDs and all of your letters and all of your degrees? People of God, don't be so knowledge that you become puffed up. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. God wants to build us up. Don't let knowledge turn you into a big puffy balloon Airhead. Humble yourselves. Be hungry. When's the last time you fasted? Do you fast once a week? Do you fast a few times a month? 
When's the last time you practiced the art, the discipline of fasting? When's the last time you hungered after the presence of the Lord? Seek after him and you will find him. The number one key component of revival is hunger and thirst. Let me tell you, people of God, if you don't want it, you're not going to have it. But if you want it, if you're hungry, if you're desperate, if you're saying, God, I know there's something more. God, I've been a Christian my whole life. For 20, 30, 40 years. But I know there's something more. I know there's something fresh. God, I know according to your word, the Bible says that you will do a new thing. God, I know that there's something more for me out there. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. No heart has fathomed what God has prepared for those who truly love him. God, I know before I die, I'm going to see a great move of God. Jesus, I know that your word, every promise in and you is yes and amen. Jesus, I know that anything is possible. And God, show me your glory in the words of Moses in the book of Exodus. Show me your glory. Show me your face. Show me more. God, I'm hungry. I'm desperate. Uh, I'm willing to die. I'm willing to suffer. I'm willing to carry my cross. I'm willing to go through hell, through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm willing to go through torment, persecution. I'm willing to go through misunderstanding. Jesus, I need more. Are you hungry? Are you desperate? Are you thirsty? Do you want to see the glory of God? Or are you satisfied with the level, the measure you have and you are at? right now. Let me tell you, there's so much more. And God has so much more for you. I want to pray for you right now. Lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you for our friends watching today. I ask you, stir up their faith. Stir up their hunger. Oh God, renew and reawaken first love again. Don't let my heart grow cold. I'm calling out, light the fire again. Lord, I ask you, Give these people a hunger and a thirst for the things of God. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim with episode one of our new series called The Key Components of Revival. In this episode, we talked about the number one key component, which is hunger and thirst. If you do not hunger after the things of God, you'll never get it. This is Dr. Ben Lim. Let me know in the comment section below what you received, what you enjoyed, what spoke to you. And I pray that you will be hungry for the things of God. God bless you.